So what we really have at work here is a system clash. There are some parameters now, some limitations that we are now going to be subject to if we want to continue our life as a species on this planet. And uh, these parameters are not subject to opinion or faith or belief or personal skill or attribute. We must respect these parameters if we want to, if we're going to make this a success. And we didn't really know about these parameters until very, very, in our very recent history. So this is sort of new information to us now. And um, I just really quickly want to talk about what those, what some of those parameters are. There's five main parameters. Um, and basically the first one is climate change. We know the climate change issue is an issue and it has to be dealt with. We need to deal with that in a systems context. And you won't find that across the political spectrum at the moment. Resources. We are currently using the annual output of the planet's resources in eight months. And we have to adjust that uh, from a systems perspective. S inequality is very caustic to pu public health. And we really need to address that within a systems context so that we can actually move forward and solve the massive growing public health crisis that we are facing as a world society. Stress is another generator of bad public health outcomes. It is a massive problem that is facing us all and it's going to affect us all, whether we realize it or not. And the last parameter is technological unemployment, which in a nutshell basically means the entire foundation of our social model is falling away and we're gonna have to find some way to deal with it. Now, of course, politicians will pretend that there is some sort of opinion that's relevant here when it comes to these technical parameters. And of course, this, this kind of makes sense because when you speak with them about these parameters, they, they just tell you that we can align with them through policies and laws, which are basically declarations and threats written on pieces of paper. They will pretend that by simply moving digits around in spreadsheets and allocating more digits to different sectors of our society and by creating jobs that we can align with these parameters and keep the system going. They are misleading. According to a 2013 study conducted by what is now called the Natural Capital Coalition, a study sponsored by the United Nations, in fact, they analyzed all the world's top industries and revealed that the profound realization that none of the world's industries would be profitable if negative externalities were accounted for. So economic growth is now consistent with predictably destroying all planetary life support systems. We need a system change, not a law change. And of course, this great reversal is taboo to know, even though no peer-reviewed journal in the past 30 years will tell you anything different. That is that every life support system on this planet is in decline, as well as social programs, as well as our water access, Try to name any means of life that isn't threatened and endangered. And you can't. There really isn't one. And that's very, very despairing. But we haven't even figured out the causal mechanism. We don't want to face the causal mechanism. You know, that's what insanity is when you do the same thing over and over and over again, though it clearly doesn't work. So it's a system disorder. And the system disorder seems to be fatal. This archaic social control system we endure has benefited with the illusion of technology's efficiency, which makes it seem like everything's getting better. And this now failed social model is only going to continue to break down as our false commercially generated wants come into an absolute clash with the emerging unstoppable natural order of our physical reality. Now, I understand people are very hesitant about the idea of a new social model due to the deep social conditioning imposed upon us throughout our lives, but the broad logic of the pivotal train of thought that arrives at the new emerging social model has a near empirical basis. And 
this absurd idea still put forward out there that there is no alternative or that the new social proposal is vague or ambiguous it simply reveals a failure to properly research. And this is why I haven't voted in the last two elections, because no one across the entire coloured political spectrum is offering what is required for our survival. And if you won't choose a colour that makes you feel good, according to this culture, you have no right to complain. So I've basically decided to stand for the election just so I can vote for something relevant and hence have a right to complain. You know, and it's a simple... I, I don't want to do an advertisement for you, but that is beautiful air. Yes. Well, you might have a big fat mortgage and a big fat interest rate to service that mortgage, I know I certainly do, but what if we told you that the money the bank lent you doesn't actually exist? You're paying interest on a loan that's been conjured up out of thin air. Sounds crazy.